everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, the very first podcast of 2021. And this is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my own journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Garmin, and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl, and um, I'll put the other things right here. I hope you've had a great start to the year. It's been two weeks since my last podcast because uh, last Thursday, so Thursday is my podcasting day, and last Thursday was... Um, New Year's Eve so um, yeah I just it was a very busy day <laughs> I wasn't going to be able to um, podcast and um, I'm happy that now two weeks later instead of one week later I have much more to show you but just before we start I wanted to uh, say a big thank you to all of you who joined me for my live podcast episode uh, last time so that was um, on the day before Christmas, uh, which was a lot of fun, and uh, I plan to do more live episodes, and uh, yeah, I just don't know when, and um, I think I'm gonna have to stick to a schedule so that people know when I'm live, so that more people will be able to join, and I, I'm just thinking to wait a little bit until the daylight comes back because I'm already able to podcast later in the day um, so that's great uh, but the later I podcast the more people will be able to join us live so yes but uh, let's get to the knitting portion of this podcast uh, I'm looking at all of my whips uh, I've been knitting quite a bit um, Last time I had a lot of progress on my Spectre sweater. There's less progress on, it, on that now and more new stuff. Um, right after my last podcast episode, I, I knit a bit on my Spectre sweater and then I had to race to uh, finish this knit commission um, that I had been working on and, you know, the deadline was approaching. So uh, I dropped everything and I went for that. And after that, um, I got into socks again. Um, uh, so for the start of this year, uh, on January 1st, I, um, um, one of Tim's sisters asked if I wanted to do a Harry Potter marathon, and I'm always in for Harry Potter movies. Um, they are my favorite, and Tim doesn't like them very much. So even though I have all of the DVDs here at home, I never really watch them because <laughs> he doesn't want to. <laughs> So whenever someone says Harry Potter movie, you know, let alone Harry Potter movie marathon, you know, I'm in. I am there. <laughs> so, um, uh, and it has been a long time since I went to a movie theater because, of course, uh, they are closed. Um, but I do remember how much I enjoy to knit socks while watching a movie. So I thought... I better cast on some socks and I had some Harry Potter yarn in stash that was a gift from my um, fiber swap buddy um, I don't know how many years ago I think maybe maybe just two years ago I think it was 2019 and I'll show you the yarn or what's left of it I've kept it in a jar because um, it had um, I don't know, it, it, it's possible that it was attacked by moths. So I thought, you know, <laughs> keep it in a glass jar until I figure out what to do with it. So um, it was attacked by moths. Um, I didn't notice it before. Uh, and I don't know if, you know, I don't know when it happened. Um, I, I kept the skein in the attic for a while, so it probably happened while in the attic, but mm, at the same time, I kind of don't want to believe it because I keep a lot of yarn in the attic. So, yes, um, at one spot in the skein, there was this, um, or there was this spot that was just uh, a couple threads were broken, uh, and the yarn that was left there, uh, some spots were very hard, um, as if, as if there was glue on it, and, you know, these ends are still a bit hard, 
and I've posted it on my Instagram stories and someone said it could be moths and I uh, I didn't really think it was moths first because the brakes were very clean and uh, moths usually you know they leave like I don't want to well, it's kind of like bite marks but it's it's usually not a very clean edge it's a very ragged edge and this wasn't like that and it was this kind of white residue on it um, which came off with water so it wasn't glue but um, anyway I had to wind this the skein in tiny balls and the biggest ones I used for my socks and I will show you them now completed the pair of socks and you can see it did some um, swirly pooling here um, but yes so I used the biggest balls that I could wind from the skein I used that for the socks and then I used some um, of the smaller balls um, I alternated um, I alternated them in the leg here I did some helical knitting so that's why this side isn't quite as pooling as this one. Um, for this one, I decided I liked it, and um, yeah, so I just continued. Uh, for the foot portion, I I really I really like it. It's just um, showing up very stripy, and I like that. For the leg, um, I think I increased a couple stitches, and you know. I think that made it pool. I think so. Because here on the foot it's also more stripy than pooling. Yeah. But I still like them. Um, it was Harry Potter inspired. Um, I don't have to I don't have to tag, but it, it was by uh, Dunn Roving um, from Maine in the US. And the colorway was Plum Pudding. Um, although I find the colors very Gryffindor-esque, so i um, <laughs> hitting myself in the head with a sock blocker. Um, I'm, I find them quite uh, resembling of the Gryffindor color, so I'm naming these my Gryffindor socks. Um, I'm also a Gryffindor. <laughs> uh, before, uh, you know, the, the, um, there is this website, Pottermore, which has tests. And you can figure out your house, your wizarding house, or your Hogwarts house, and your Patronus. And before, um, I, I was a Hufflepuff. And, and I think they altered the test because 90% of people came out as Hufflepuffs. Um, and so they altered the test to be not so very extreme. Um, and then I was a Gryffindor with a stack Patronus, so I'm basically Harry Potter. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll show you the progress that I made during each film. So during the first film, I was winding the yarn and getting frustrated with the yarn, but at some point, I, um, I, just, I just figured, okay, I have enough of a ball now to start knitting, I'll figure out the rest later. So I started knitting, and then dur um, during the first film I knit this, and this is a Harry Potter stitch marker by Sucre Sucre Miniatures. Um, and because Harry got a lot of letters during the first film, um, I decided to use this stitch marker here. Um, and then during the second film, um, it seems like I knit a lot more, but uh, I wasn't winding the yarn anymore. So this is pure knitting. I finished the heel during Chamber of Secrets and I used another Harry Potter stitch marker. This is a pumpkin pasty and there is even a um, lightning bolt in there. Um, and then during uh, the Prison of Azkaban, I knit this part and I used my <laughs> London double decker bus um, because at the start of uh, this movie, Harry goes on the night bus, which is actually purple, but yeah, I think it counts. So I knit that during the third movie and then I just knit this um, when I was at home.
So, um, so I finished this sock on January 1st. I finished the whole sock in one day. Um, and then, uh, you know, I went home. Uh, Tim's sister still uh, watched two movies that night. <laughs> I could not. <laughs> so she watched part four and five. I got up the next morning and I watched part four in the morning. Uh, the Goblet of Fire. And so I cast on the second sock then. Um, I think I bound off that morning as well. Okay, I, I'm not sure. But anyway, I um, was up until here after the Goblet of Fire. And I have <laughs> a stitch marker of a cup. But I thought, okay, Goblet of Fire, you know, Triwizard Cup. Uh, yeah, I'll use a coffee cup stitch marker here. And then I did not have any time to watch the fifth movie, which was um, uh, Phoenix something, The Order of Phoenix, uh, because um, we were getting together again for the sixth movie, which was The Half-Blood Prince. And I, um, yeah, I wasn't sure what stitch marker to use. I used a star stitch marker. So I knit this during the sixth movie, um, and then we watched the, oh, what's it called? Yeah, half Blood Prince, and then, oh, Deathly Hallows Part 1, and I chose a stitch marker of a tree for the Elder Wand. Um, yeah, so I knit that, and then I finished it at home. Um... So that was my Harry Potter socks. And then, oh, for the very last movie, I worked on a different pair, and I'll show you later. Um, yes, so these are my Harry Potter-inspired socks, my Gryffindor socks finished. Um, they are, you know, not a pattern specifically, but um, I used my simple toe-up sock pattern, more or less, but I added ribbing on the front of the foot and on the entirety of the leg and it's two by two ribbing and for the cuff I did one by one. I wasn't sure whether to just keep doing two by two ribbing. I could have done. I uh, browsed on Instagram for a bit and um, yeah I decided that for this kind of yarn I wanted to use a one by one cuff. So I did that, and uh, I've just put them on sock blockers because <laughs> ripped socks look awful when just done. <laughs> they are so tiny and so narrow, so I thought I would um, show them on a sock blocker. I still need to wash them, um, I just didn't want to wash it with all of the um, progress keepers on. Um, in case they get rusty or something. So I'll take the markers off and then I'll wash them and then I can wear them. Um, so yes, I completed the socks on January 1st and January 2nd. So that was two socks in two days. And then on January 3rd, I thought, okay, what if I can finish three socks in three days? Um, and I pulled this one out of my whip bag um, and I had already finished the leg. I was actually inspired to finish this sock because of a question that someone asked during my live podcast. Someone asked if I also knit cuff down socks or that I only knit toe up and yes I am a toe up kind of girl um, but I was remembered of the cuff down sock that I still had uh, on the needles. This is my wild strawberry socks pattern and it is wildly different from the one that I originally made. I'll put a picture up here of the wild strawberry socks. It is a color work pattern and um, it uses bohus uh, knitting technique which means that you use color work and also pearl stitches. Um, and it creates a lovely effect um, just when done in two colors. And 
and um, I wanted to show how it looks on solid colored yarn or in it's not solid colored uh, with just one color um, and there's this lovely texture pattern it reminds me a bit of Hermione's everyday socks uh, but it's not the same it's yeah it's just really really nice and the last time I podcasted I was here and during Christmas I had already did, done the heel flap and most of the gusset and the heel flap I used a linen stitch for that uh, it was the same stitch that I used for the bow tie one of the uh, gift knits and I had done the uh, gusset decreases and I think yeah, I think I was about here and then I finished this on the morning of January 3rd. So I had three socks done in three days, which was very exciting. And then I cast on for the second sock of this pair. And um, the yarn that I'm using is Sock Sanity um, by Sticks and Cups. It's a Dutch yarn store, and uh, this is their hand-dyed yarn. And I have cast on the second sock. So this is, I'm about halfway done with the ribbing. And then it was time to go and watch the seventh movie. And I decided I didn't want to continue in this sock because I would soon have to switch to the... Um, patterning and I thought I can't do that while watching a movie so uh, I decided to leave this one at home and instead instead I picked a, another sock that I had finished the toe of um, and this is using rainbow yarn by Crea Lynn Designs and I will put her name on the screen, and that's also the name of her Etsy shop, Krealine Designs. Uh, she dyes wonderful self-striping yarns. I'm not sure if she has any in stock right now. This is her Rainbow Bouquet colorway. It's a beautiful rainbow. Um, and I decided to pair it with a sock yarn that I have dyed which is light gray because first I wanted to do a color work pattern um, and because for color work I need a contrasting yarn so I needed to find a color that was not yet in the rainbow or not too close to any of the colors so I picked gray even though with a yellow it's not really um, contrasting enough and then I uh, decided uh, to do just stripes. Um, I had recently seen the tutorial video for helical knitting or helical knitting, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, uh, by um, Grace. She's babbling yarns. <laughs> Grace. Yeah. She had a video on helical knitting and I thought, oh, that's a really fun way to do stripes. Um, so I knit this during the seventh movie and then I knit most of this on January 4th. Yes, I did not complete the ripping on January 4th, so I thought, ah, I can't do four socks in four days. Um, and, you know, January 4th was last Monday so it was a working day again so yeah it was it was a silly thing um, to start with um, to finish one sock each day but um, it was uh, you know silly incentives like that uh, really motivate me but you can really see the beautiful gradient and um, I've already finished or not really because I still need a heel but I've also finished the second sock and I still have this much left, so I'm hoping to get some shorties out of it 
uh, without pairing it with any other yarns so just on its own um, and for a while I was thinking okay do I want to use the knit side as the right side or do I want to use the purl side as the right side and I've decided to use the purl side as the right side um, because I just love how it looks like I've done multiple stripes with each color with the um, knit side it kind of looks a bit zigzaggy and you can see it better here it kind of looks like miniature zigzags uh, or really thin zigzag lines and yeah I just didn't really like it so I decided to um, use the inside as the right side and you can see that it is the right side because the ribbing um, this is the right side of the ribbing and not this and I am knitting an afterthought heel and I'm knitting that on the knit side um, so that that also shows up as purl on the purl side and for this one oops, for this one I still have to do the heel I've just put in scrap yarn um, you put the scrap yarn in while knitting the sock so you will have to know where to put your heel uh, so this is actually not called an afterthought heel, it's called a forethought heel. Um, the af a true afterthought heel is where you just knit a tube and then um, cut where you want to um, insert your heel. I have a tutorial video here on my channel that's called how to knit an afterthought heel and I'm showing you how to knit an afterthought heel either with scrap yarn so that's the forethought heel or without scrap yarn and I'm showing you on both DBNs and on circular needles and it's quite a lengthy video um, but I just wanted you know um, I just wanted it to feel like someone holding your hand um, so that I know that it is scary but uh, to cut a stitch in your sock but um, so I wanted it to be very slow and clear and perfect for beginner sock knitters and I have had amazing reviews on it and amazing feedback so um, if you are thinking of doing an afterthought heel please go and check out my tutorial um, and yeah it works perfectly for the helical knitting um, just you know if you've done helical knitting you'll know that the join of the color or the changing of the color is um, moving all around your sock. Um, make sure you put in the scrap yarn on the side that has no color switch at that moment. And I think I will be writing a pattern for this, so if you have more questions about that, then I think you know the pattern will be helpful but um yeah just know that it is coming um yeah and yes i wanted to show you the heat and the heel yarn <laughs> it has rolled away um i am using a very dark um blue yarn for the heel on this sock because I did not want to use the rainbow yarn because I wanted to have enough left for some other socks. And I had some yarn by Coop Knits. Um, that's almost a perfect match to the dark blue in the rainbow. So, uh, <laughs> this looks weird. So I am using um, that yarn for the heel on this sock. For the other sock, uh, the heel is in this green portion and I did not have minty green but I did have apple green it's a little bit more vibrant but I think I can get away with it 
So that will be fun. And then they will be done. So yes, I was sad that I could not finish four socks in four days or maybe finish them both on the next day and have five socks in five days. Um, but yeah, I'm still happy with my progress. I think they look awesome. And if you also want socks like this, then you can shop Creoline's designs, so she is called Eline. Um, you can shop her yarns. Um, I'm not. I'm no longer selling my yarns, but this is my wool silk rami bakes. So if you have some of this in your stash, then you know that you can use it for socks like this, um, or any any type of socks. Uh, so yes, I think these will be done next week. Um, I actually wanted to use the progress board in this episode. I wiped it clean of my giftnets, but since I am losing light swiftly, I will um, save that for next time. Um, and then I have one more sock to show you. So I've showed you three pairs, one finished one almost finished and one half finished. I have one more sock to show you and I'm knitting that with this fun yarn by Regia. It's a self-patterning yarn and I have just completed the heel. And the reason why I am taking so long with this sock is that um, I'm filming a tutorial video for this so um, so after completing each part I have to stop and film the beginning of the next part so this is an upcoming tutorial video on my patreon page it is the gusset shorter heel and heel flap toe up heel and I've made a little miniature sock um, that you will have seen before if you've watched previous episodes and this is just to illustrate um, each part. Uh, so there's the gusset part uh, in light blue and then the shorter heel in light purple and then the heel flap in a little bit darker purple. Yes, and I have finished all parts of the tutorial video so now I only have to edit it only have to edit <laughs> it still takes a couple hours um, and then you know a nice title screen and um, some canva magic and um, yes and that will be coming very soon and I've also finished the tutorial for my scrappy socks so that will also be going on my patreon page so yes lots of tutorials um, and yes, talking about the socks, I also want to show you this one. Um, I think it was a little over a year ago that I gave this yarn uh, together with um, a part of a sock that I had prepared. Um, I had given it to one of my... Um, um, one of the sisters of Tim's boyfriend, so um, the gift recipient for the bow tie, uh, he has also um, expressed interest in knitting and um, he asked if I had a sock that I didn't particularly care about that he could just practice knitting on. So I gave him this sock and I'm not sure at what point he started knitting, um, although <laughs> I think I can actually see. Um, so <laughs> this is um, the sock that he knit. I think he started about here. Um, and I gave him a 2.5 millimeter needle, um, which is what I had been knitting the sock on. This is a DK sock yarn. Uh, from West Yorkshire Spinners. And uh, he has... Um, a very tight knitting um, style so can you see the difference in stitches 
And so this has been more than a year in the making. Uh, and now, um, when I was at Tim's sister's house for the Harry Potter marathon, I saw this laying there and I was like, okay, I'll maybe just take it off of his hands and give him something new to work on because uh, working this tightly um, with these sharp high high needles um, that's gonna be very painful on your fingers and if you can see um, the cable has bent quite a bit here which I think um, means that he pushed it through the stitches like that in order to not have to push the, um, the tip of these very very sharp needles um, so I thought okay <laughs> poor guy I'll just uh, give him something um, with bigger yarn and bigger needles to work on um, but I think it's you know it's so sweet that <laughs> that he knit all of this in such tight stitches and then um, can you see what he did here he switched from knitting to purl and I did not ta I did not uh, teach him how to purl, so I think he just um, at one point picked up the needle and um, or picked up his work and started knitting the other way, so, um, that he was knitting knit, knit stitches on the other side. So he had turned his work somehow. Um, yeah, and I thought, okay, this is never going to fit me as a sock not even if I cut in and do a heel so I thought okay I'll uh, I'll just finish this for him and I thought I could turn this over and um, and maybe make a bag out of it I don't know <laughs> uh, but I just thought it was really really sweet and I will find a use for it and um, yeah and I gave him a new project to work on because I actually thought okay maybe he doesn't enjoy it that much because it's so tight and I could imagine it was very frustrating um, but when I when I took it from him he said oh well maybe do you have another sock that I could work on um, so I gave him some bigger needles um, some blunter needles too so he doesn't prick his finger and uh, some um, bigger yarn so let's see uh, but yeah I just thought it was really really sweet and I wanted to show you guys and then the last project that I am showing you is of course my Spectre sweater and uh, even though I haven't knit that much on it um, in my memory I think there is I think two or three inches on here so six or seven centimeters um, this is it so far I think I was at this point last time so I've knit about this this much and you can see it's getting lighter and lighter Yeah. So now I am working on I think this is number 14. Yeah, this is number 14. And I skipped colors 11 and 12. So this is number 14 and after this I will be working with 15, 16 and 17. Yes! So I am very excited to uh, start working on this again because it feels like I haven't worked on it for a long time. Um, yeah, but I wanted to see if I can get if I could get those socks finished. And I think I will finish the rainbow socks before I start working on this again. Simply because, um, you know, with every start of the year I get this urge to finish whips uh, finish works in progress before I uh, start new ones and um, yeah so I think I will finish the rainbow socks and maybe even the purple socks before uh, continuing my spectre sweater and just to recap 
um, if you haven't seen the previous episodes, this is a sweater pattern by Hohi Locatelli. It's uh, designed for four colors of yarn, but I am using 24 colors, or maybe not all of the colors, but um, I'm using my Advent Calendar by Wolmet Verve, a Dutch indie dyer. And um, it's stunning. Um, and Sylvia from Wolmet Verve has put some more um, Advent Calendar skeins in her shop. Not sure if they are still there, but um, those were the mini skeins for this exact same sweater. So if you like these colors, then go ahead and um, um, look at her website and see if they are still there. And if you watched my previous episode to more or less the end, then you will have heard me talk about my plans to knit a knit collage pattern. Um, sorry for the crinkling. Um, I was planning to knit the Kaleidoscope cardigan, but it seems like the pattern is discontinued. I'm only able to find the Kaleidoscope um, sweater, and I don't want to knit a sweater. I want, I, uh, with, with such a bulky yarn, I want to be able to open it, you know, air it out, <laughs> um, because it gets hot quite quickly. So I want a cardigan, so I'm just looking at their patterns and seeing if I can find the kaleidoscope cardigan or maybe some other cardigan. Uh, because I have five, five balls of this, which is uh, Wool and the Gang Crazy Sexy Wool, um, which is 100% Peruvian wool. It's, um, it's single ply. Um, yeah, and it's bulky enough for uh, like 10 or 12 millimeter needles, so it's, uh, yes, very bulky. And uh, before I, you know, with just these five balls, I don't have enough to knit a cardigan. Um, but with some of my hand, uh, not hand dyed, with some of my hand spun yarn, I might be able to uh, make up the difference. And then I can add some fun stripes in there. So I am itching to cast that on. Um, so yes, perhaps that will be a new cast on next week too. I'm not sure. But I got the yarn off the attic just to, um, <laughs> uh, to, to match it to my hand spun yarn and see what I can do. Um, my hand spun yarn isn't quite as thick, so I might have to spin some new yarn, which is also exciting. So yeah, who knows, but I think this will be a very quick knit, so I might be able to fit it in there somewhere, in between the sock and spectra knitting. And now it is really getting too dark for me to podcast, and that is quite perfectly timed because I have no more things to show you. Um, so I want to thank you all for being here with me. Um, I hope you've had a great start to the new year. And don't let people with New Year's resolutions get you down. You don't need to change yourself. You can just, you know, it's it's so silly when you think about it that, you know, uh, the start of a new calendar that we have made up, the universe has not intended for any of that, <laughs> um, that the start, you know, the chains of a number should make you change as a human. So, so yeah, don't let the diet ads and um, fitness gurus get you down. Um, just do what feels good for you, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you are knitting or crocheting or otherwise uh, keeping yourself happy with crafts, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>